process of dating with carbon-14 starts in the upper atmosphere. Cosmic rays, which are mostly protons moving at almost the speed of light, strike molecules in the upper atmosphere, causing a cascade of subatomic particles, some of which are relatively slow-moving neutrons. Some of these neutrons will strike nitrogen atoms and be absorbed by them. At the same time, a proton is ejected, reducing the atomic number by one, forming carbon-14. This carbon-14 circulates around the atmosphere and is likely to be oxidised to form carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants during photosynthesis, and then in turn some of the plants are eaten by animals, and as is nature's way, some of those animals are eaten by other animals, including us. So small amounts of carbon-14 are spread through the food chain. Eventually, all these plants and animals die, and at that point you can understand that they can no longer absorb any radioactive carbon. The carbon is unstable, but it has a very long half-life, about 5,730 years. If we then examine the remains of any organic material and measure the amount of carbon-14 remaining, assuming that we knew how much carbon-14 there was there at the start, we can make a calculation or an estimation of the age of this organic material. There are some limitations to this technique. Firstly, the half-life of carbon-14 is not precisely 5,730 years. It's that plus or minus about 40 years. However, that is a very small percentage. Secondly, we have to make an assumption about how much carbon-14 was around when this plant or animal was alive. We don't always know that very accurately because the amount of cosmic rays reaching the Earth is not constant. And finally, there's a limitation on age. With a half-life of 5,700 odd years, Anything that is many half-lives old is going to have so little carbon-14 left that it is difficult to measure accurately. To calculate the age of some old material, we use the standard equation that the activity now is equal to the original activity, A0, multiplied by E, the base of natural logarithms, to the minus lambda t. If you're not familiar with this equation, there's an explanatory video. A link is in the explanation to this video. In this example given, you have a sample of timber, and it is estimated that 64% of the carbon-14 atoms, which would have been expected if it had been fresh, are actually present. So, rearranging the equation, we have A over A0 equals minus lambda t. And that is equal to 0.64. Taking logs on both sides of the equation gives us minus lambda t is log to the base e 0.64. And t then equals log to the base e of 0.64 over lambda. The value of lambda, the decay constant, is log to the base 2 divided by the half-life in seconds. And although it is correctly supposed to be in seconds, we will simply leave it in years and do all our calculations in years. Rattling this through on a calculator, we'll keep everything in years. So log to the base 2 divided by 5730 gives us this figure, which is in the units of years to the minus 1. From that, we can use the equation we had earlier of the natural log of 0.64 divided by lambda, and that gives us a final figure, the negatives cancel out, of 3,688 years. Thank you for watching, I hope you found that useful. There are some handy links here.